Hiring and maintaining back-of-house staff is actually really hard, especially when it comes to cooks, since they have a bad rep for being bossy, reckless, and a little bit bad at following orders. At least, in my case, I was. Hello there, my name is Victor. I'm a cook turned restaurant manager turned restaurant consultant, and I'm here to help you build the successful business you have in mind. A commonplace issue in restaurants all over the world is the back of house staff. You can't have a restaurant without a good team handling the kitchen smoothly. Still, not all restaurants are the same, and the advice out there points all of them in the same direction. So here's the guide that will be useful to clear all your doubts. In this video I'll talk to you about the number one rule of hiring back of house staff, the tips you should follow to hire a potentially good team, and the best practices you should use to hammer them into a dream team. First, let's talk about the back of house staff. Back of house staff is everything behind the counter and usually deep into the kitchen depending on how you organize your restaurant. They cook, clean the kitchen, clean the dishes, they throw away the garbage, run clandestine fighting clubs and more. I won't talk about specific positions in this video because you can find those anywhere. What I will tell you is that you won't find a dream team from the get-go. That's why the first rule is to talk about Waiterio's successful restaurant channel and subscribe. Now seriously, the first rule is to focus on the hiring process. Focus on three things. Attitude, psychological evaluation, and reading the potential the person has to evolve based on their learning capabilities. That was a really long phrase, wasn't it? Those three things will help you get the best type of back of house employees. You see, in this industry we often hire people based on skills or knowledge. However, other industries have realized that focusing on mental and growth potential is a far better approach. Why aren't we doing that in the restaurant industry? Well, some restaurants are doing it very efficiently, mostly those focused on standardization, training and good management, which are usually fast food restaurants. Now, you really don't have to standardize everything in your restaurant. You can just standardize hiring practices and training and that will solve a lot of the problems you may have with hiring back-of-house staff. There are only three tips worth your while when it comes to hiring back-of-house staff. The first tip is to focus on internal psychological evaluation. The second tip is an alternative to focus on reading people. You can achieve either of these by becoming an expert, which isn't advisable, especially if you don't want to deal with all the details. So you can also hire a specialist who can take care of it. It can be in the form of an experienced restaurant manager or chef who knows how to read people and form a team, or in the form of an HR specialist who knows how to handle the psychological evaluation process. Both ways can take you to success. The third tip is to actually give some chances to the young, unexperienced ones. I started in this industry just like that. The other day I was talking to a fellow consultant and he mentioned that restaurant owners most hired the young ones that haven't been spoiled by the dark side of this industry. Low wages, poor working conditions, environment and bad treatment. And the bonus tip is to take your time and measure each employee's progress. You can do this by giving them a two week or even a one month paid trial. This will help you measure their progress, adaptability, how well they fit into the current team and many different things. With the fast pace of some restaurants nowadays, uh, pulling this off is very hard, so please apply it as you see fit. Now let's say that you already hired everyone you wanted to hire and they are good employees. So now comes hammering time. Now that you built a high potential team, well, we're not really hammering anyone. The key is to apply gentle management or leadership and it just means to treat employees, well, not just like employees, but as people who are looking to grow, learn, and earn a respectable income from that experience. Of course, some people are just looking to make a living out of their jobs, and that's alright too, but with proper incentives, you can change anyone's mindset. Don't just promise a salary, promise a respectable income. Don't say no to their problems, promise well-earned support. Promise to help them when necessary. Promise flexibility and growth. But of course, leave those promises with your knees and make sure you can keep them if employees keep their part of the deal. With this strategy, you will hammer down low wages, poor working conditions and environment and bad treatment. This is also what's called an emotional salary. 
which is far better by today's standards. Now that you have built your team, you can start focusing on efficiency. You must focus on efficiency in a way that's not overwhelming or overly complex. That's why we recommend that you start by organizing the way things work in the kitchen. You can standardize contact with the front of house team. This is vital. The process of preparing dishes. The different channels of communication if you offer takeout, delivery, online sales or all of them. Optimize order taking so all of them are clear once they reach the kitchen. And more. All of this might seem impossible, but actually you can achieve all of this by switching to Viterio's POS. Check out this video to learn if Viterio is for you. And that's it, now you're ready to start creating your new strategy, apply other useful tips and more. Keep all of this in mind, take notes and please keep watching. More videos like this are coming your way. Until next time.